Inerrancy means that the Bible tells the truth in everything it says and can be trusted, not only about spiritual things like how do we trust in Christ for salvation, but also historical events. In the first edition of Systematic Theology, published in 1994, I explained why I believe the Bible is inerrant, that is, it doesn't affirm anything that is contrary to fact. I didn't give very much of an explanation in terms of actual examples from Scripture, so in this case I've added discussion of passages on the order of temptations of Jesus in the wilderness. In Matthew and Luke, the order differs in how do we, which is the, tri, which is the actual way in which it happened. And then there's an um, objection where people say, look at what Jesus said, the mustard seed. Consider the mustard seed the smallest of all seeds. But some people have said, well, wait a minute, now scientists can tell us that orchid seeds are smaller than mustard seeds. So Jesus made an error here on uh, scientific fact, but it doesn't matter because his spiritual truths are to be believed. And my answer is, wait a minute, you're saying the Bible doesn't, the Bible affirms something that is false. I can't believe that God would lie to us or that Jesus would tell a lie. And I try to explain then what I think a good solution to that challenge is. There's supposedly a conflict in the Gospels between in Matthew, Mark, and Luke when Jesus tells his disciples in one Gospel to take sandals on their journey and take a staff and then another one not to take sandals uh, or a staff. And uh, there's an explanation for why those are different, but um, some people have challenged and said, wait a minute, there's a contradiction here. So I, I gave those examples to say, look, even these supposedly difficult challenges to inerrancy have good answers to them. And uh, I'm not the first to see them. They've been in the commentaries for years. Um, they're in the standard literature on these uh, subjects. Uh, you go back to Augustine or Calvin, they have seen the supposed contradictions and proposed solutions to them. So they've been around for hundreds of years. I don't think there's any convincing example where there's no way to reconcile the biblical accounts, uh, but I think that the Bible is amazingly internally consistent with what it affirms.